John K, President, CEO. State Director. Head Cheese. State Director. Okay. <laughs> Louisiana Chapter of Americans for Prosperity. Uh, first of all, you're in studio today, which is awesome, but you're, you're a local guy, right? I am. I'm from Shreveport. I lived here still most of my life. I, I moved away about five or six years ago. I live in the Baton Rouge. How does a now. Shreveport kid, give us a little background for folks that don't know, because you are hardly an elderly man. Um, congratulations on the baby, by the way. Thank you. We're having a Seven. blast. First Father's Day. First Father's Day. Congrats. She got. She's getting me tickets to the Cowboys Saints game. Go Cowboys! Wow, she's nice rolling. Kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> savings bond, Grandpa's savings. She's bond working baby. very hard. <laughs> you listen to us on the app, by the way, in Baton Rouge, do. don't you? You're yep. you're a big fan too. I am. How That's did cool. you get from here to Baton Rouge and a little political and or professional history? Because you know, you and I have hung out a little bit before. We've talked a lot, but I don't really know that much about your background. Ground. Sure. About 10, well, maybe 12 years ago now. I have to count. I, I, it makes me feel old when Not I say Not getting any like younger, that. buddy. Uh, I, I started dabbling in local politics up here. I worked on different campaigns, and then I worked for Congressman John Fleming for two years in his office here. Uh, and if he was anywhere in the district, I was with him and drove him there. Uh, so kind of got my feet wet there. I worked for John Kennedy's campaign uh, for U.S. Senate uh, against Mary Landrieu when he lost to her several years ago. Um, in his pre-treasurer days. No, he was treasurer then. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You're right. right. See see how it all runs together? Mm -hmm. Go it ahead, does. please. So then one thing led to another, and um, people that I had worked with before, one of them gave me a call and said, hey, I'm starting this Americans for Prosperity thing in, in uh, South Louisiana. Would you like to join me? And I said, sure, let's do it. What so is Americans for Prosperity? Americans for Prosperity is an organization that uh, seeks to break barriers for individuals in, in as far as government's concerned. So basically what we want to do is we want to look at whatever government's doing and, and get it out of the way of people living the American dream. It's you very know, simple. You, you said something real interesting off the air and we can sort of start here. And and because Aaron was asking about the gas tax and something you guys had done when the gas tax idea came up in the previous legislative session. And you said something that that is legit and at the same time kind of chilling. It's going to keep coming up. The gas tax increase idea. You said it's going to keep coming up. I have to beat it back every time. They only have to win once. Exactly. Uh, actually, I, I, I privately went to them this year during the conversation about the gas tax. And I, I really firmly believe that we have the backing of the people of Louisiana. They don't want a gas tax increase. Mm -mm. So my suggestion to the gas tax folks was, why don't you put this on the ballot and let the people vote for it? said I'll I won't even I won't even oppose it through the legislative session I'll let you do what you're going to do put it on the ballot this fall and let the people in Louisiana vote and let them give you your answer because they're going around telling people the people of Louisiana want this I disagree so I was willing to put my money where my mouth is Crickets, huh? and guess what they didn't yeah. want to do yeah. they didn't want to put it on the ballot because mm -hmm. I think that they know uh, that it would die and if it dies there's no chance of bringing it back for a long time you're here to speak to the Rotary Club today um, at the convention center, and you're going to talk about criminal justice reform. I, f I find that this issue uh, has a lot of bipartisan support from a lot of different crowds, and some are claiming it's working. There are some who are saying, you know, in Louisiana, we let, what was it, 1,900 people out of jail or some, some high number. You really believe it is going to work for Louisiana? I do. And you only have to look to the states that have already done it and the results that they've had. Louisiana is not a leader on criminal justice reform per se. We're more or less playing follow the leader. And if you look at places like Texas, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, and they implemented very similar reforms years ago, and theirs have had time to kind of play out, and we've been able to see what's happened in those states. And what's happened is the crime rate has gone down. People who are going, people are going back to jail at a lower rate. That was than they the were point before. that you made that I found the most interesting is that the recidivism rate is it, it, it noticeably drops. How does that work out like that? Because when you send someone to prison for, <clears throat> let's say, a drug possession offense for ten years or however long it is, that person comes out either a hardened criminal that they Crimes, weren't they before, go to, go to crime school or they come out and they find it more difficult to to find work in society to be a contributing member of society so if we're putting someone away for that long there is 
there are collateral consequences that society has to pay as well. I'll bet you get this all the time, though. What? You're a conservative and you're for lessened penalties for criminals? What the hell is wrong with you? I do get that. uh, But there's an old saying that it kind of hit me this weekend. It's does the punishment fit the crime? And whenever I think about that, I'm like, is the crime, is the punishment tough enough for the crime? But you never think about the opposite side of that. Is the punishment too harsh for the crime? And if the punishment is too harsh for the crime, what are the consequences of that? Uh, And I think that's what we're beginning to address as a state.